Travel from San Diego to Cabo San Lucas and Ensenada, Mexico. Movies and magic await. The 2023 TCM Classic Cruise. Book your stateroom today. Visit TCMCruise.com for more information. TCM as we celebrate 100 years of Warner Brothers. Tonight, a lineup I've been looking forward to all month. A slate of movies from two of the finest directors ever to work at Warner Brothers or any studio for that matter. We began with two Martin Scorsese pictures, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, followed by Mean Streets. Coming up, a double feature from one of the most influential and provocative filmmakers of any generation, Stanley Cooper. Kubrick's catalog is woefully small, only 13 features as director, but what I've seen all of them. he made in those 13 films over 47 years. Kubrick fiercely guarded his autonomy on his productions, so it's hard to think of him working with any studio. But movies, of course, have to be financed, which is what led Kubrick to sign a three-picture deal with Warners in 1983 after working with the studio on The Shining from 1980. Up next, the first film Kubrick made under that contract from 1987. This is the TCM premiere of Full Metal Jacket. Based on Gustav Hosford's novel, The Short Timers, the story follows a new class of U.S. Marine Corps recruits as they go through basic training at Paris Island, South Carolina, before leaving to fight in Vietnam. Kubrick broke the film into two distinct halves, the training, then the combat, which included the 1968 Tet Offensive. Matthew Modine leads the cast as Private James Joker Davis, who early on is tasked with looking out for a maladjusted recruit nicknamed Gomer Pyle by their belligerent drill sergeant. Vincent D'Onofrio is riveting as Pyle, and the sergeant is played in memorably impressive fashion by Arlie Ermey, a former Marine, also a Vietnam vet, who served as the film's technical advisor, too. With Kubrick's encouragement, Ermey provided much of his own dialogue, but the Oscar-nominated screenplay is credited to Kubrick, Gustav Hosford, the novelist, and Michael Herr, the former war correspondent who wrote one of the best books ever about reporting during a war, Dispatches, a memoir of Herr's experiences in Vietnam. At this point in his career, Kubrick preferred to stay close to home, so he shot the film in England. A native New Yorker, he had been living in the English countryside for decades. The Washington Post referred to the London set used for the battle scenes as Vietnam on the Thames. The futility of war and the dehumanization of soldiers was a theme Kubrick came back to again and again in his films, from his first feature, Fear and Desire, Paths of Glory, even to Dr. Strangelove. Describing Full Metal Jacket, Kubrick said, It's not pro-war or anti-war, it's just the way things are. From 1987, also with Adam Baldwin and Arliss Howard, with a score by Kubrick's daughter Vivian, working under the name Abigail Mead. This is Full Metal Jacket. 